Hi all, so the following video I originally shot for Instagram, but I decided to bring it back to YouTube because you guys can all benefit from it too. And you know, I'm doing it with my buddy Bach and Victor over there. Anyways, enjoy it. Cheers. Hi guys, so I've been getting a lot more technical questions on YouTube recently. I figured let's just bring it over to Instagram. It's more casual this way. I can just shoot it on my phone between practice sessions. So one of the questions that I've been getting a lot in these last few weeks, twice actually in like the last past week, is how to approach these big chordy movements of Bach. They are so hard, they really are. I mean, for me too, it's, it's, it's really difficult stuff. So two of the things I wish I knew more about when I was getting into this. Number one, keep the bow moving. You would not believe how helpful this is. It sounds silly because obviously we're keeping our bow moving, but are you really? Even during the rests, all the way through your phrases, right? If you have the first movement of the G minor sonata, you've got this big, beautiful chord, and your arm has to be moving at this constant speed all the way through it. Even when you're thinking about your left hand, what's going to happen next? And all the little things that our brain is want to do, don't let that stop what is going on and the right arm. Okay, so this is crucial because as soon as you get a little bit of tension in your right arm, it breaks the phrase. It just, it ruins the phrase because you get a little crunch and it's gone. Okay, so this has to be independent even during the rests. It is always in motion. So I'm gonna go ahead and play from the G minor sonata just so you have an idea of what I was talking about in the last one and what I will be talking about for the next one. <laughs> Okay, so I hope you could see in that last video how this arm was in motion always, and that by the end of it, this was my bow position. Let me give it some support here so you can see. My knuckles are level, and you can swipe back to take a look at that again, but this is a really, really important thing in doing these chords and preparing for the next chord. If your knuckles are not level, that means that something has been broken up in the energy of your arm. So when your knuckles are level, this gives you the potential energy to use your entire arm into one clean stroke all the way down using your weight, no pressure involved, okay? And this is what lets, what allows a chord to ring and to sing. If you're tightening here, if your knuckles are higher or your wrist has locked that movement, or if it's down too low or anything like that, if you're locked, it disappears. So I hope this was helpful. Um, those are two things for me that really allows me to get at these really beautiful, pristine phrases that Bach has given us. Of course, they are pristine, but they are bare. They are bare as hell, and they are so scary to play on stage. So you always have to let your energy and just all that stage fright or whatever is going on on the inside, you just have to let it seep down through your arm, use your weight, never, ever, ever use pressure. So again, I hope that was helpful. Um, if you have any more questions, keep them coming. All right, cheers.